Hi, today I'm going to show you how to send a entire CSV file to Zapier so you can send a CSV file around the Zap. Um, this is compared to our other option where you can trigger a Zap for each row in a CSV file that you're importing. So let's say here we've set up our import page. So this page is, um, if you've never used this before, a page you get after you do the setup where you can drag a CSV file here or have one sent to an email address or post a CSV file to the API. And this import page will process that file. It can clean it. Um, it can add fields. It can delete fields or columns. And then it can send that data on its way. So one option is to send it row by row to a Zap so you can handle each record in a CSV. But some people just want to clean the file and then send the file to a Zap so that they can send the file like to, as an email attachment or post it into some other system. Um, and they just want like a URL to the file. So. You know, you set up your import page for Zapier, and the first thing you're going to need to do is actually make your Zap. So, you know, you're going to choose Easy CSV as the trigger, and for the event, you're going to do a new CSV file uh, via import. Then you'll choose your account, then you'll test your trigger, and you'll see here when you do a test, you get all these fields back. So every time an import happens on your import page, it'll trigger this um, Zap. And what'll come in is a temp CSV file URL. This is a temporary URL to a public file. So then most Zaps will take the URL and actually use the file somewhere. So you'll use this URL and it's temporary because it only lasts a day. So you really want to take the URL and put it into some other system. You don't really want to reference the URL for a long period of time. You want to like send it along. If you attach it to an email, it becomes a permanent file on an email, for example. So then you're going to get you know, the import page info that it came from, who did the import, the name of the import, usually this is the file name unless you specify something else, the ID of the import, so each import will have a unique ID, and then you know you get an import code. If you, you can pass a code into Easy CSV with every import. Most people don't, don't do this. So then you'll click continue, and in this case we're going to send the CSV as an uh, attachment in an email to you know, someone else. So in the action, we're going to say we want to send the email to, you know, nobody as an example from a, a test account I have. That's the from name. And then the subject line, you can start using those variables that come in on the trigger step. So, you know, the import ID that makes the subject line unique um, so they don't kind of get bundled together in Gmail. Then, you know, this is going to be the body. I'm going to put the import name in it just for reference and the import ID. And then as the attachment, we're just going to specify that URL, right? So you go down to here. Um, you do temporary CSV file URL, and then it'll be an attachment to an email. That's really it. So you're going to use that URL to send it in different uh, Zap steps. So like, let's say you need to FTP at somebody, you might have an FTP action, or you need to do a webhook post. You know, so you'll use like the uh, webhook post action in Zapier, and you'll post that URL, and the receiving system will grab the URL, grab the file, and you know, save it somewhere. That's really it. Um, Back on the import page, you know, after you set up your Zap, you'll go into your sheet, sheet details, and you should be able to select Post to Zapier, and you're going to want to say Create a new CSV file, right? The other option is uh, a new row, which you don't really want. In this case, we wanted to send a whole file. So you don't need to specify a file name. It'll be like new underscore CSV file underscore unique ID, but you could do um, a file name if you want. Like maybe you're pushing it to a server, and they need the file name to be something. Like if you need it, leads and you need it, you know, month, day, year, and maybe you always want each file to have a unique ID, so we, we can let you generate like a unique thing. And on the fly, at send time, this will be set to the month, day, and year, replaced, and this will be replaced with some ID. We have a bunch of special syntax here. If you look at our docs, you can use, you know, this string, this string, uh, you know, some other strings if you want. If you need one, just contact support and we'll add an extra one, but it gives examples of if you said this, it becomes this at uh, import time. Uh, so that's the whole feature. If you ever need any help, just contact support. Um, and thanks.